up here in the top side of Death Aura. Give it up for Trap. And his opponent down here in the bottom. He is time. And they say time waits for no man. So that is, uh, you know what? I, I can kind of agree with that. I don't think time really waits for his opponent to, uh, to kind of do anything. I think he always wants to be the one to kind of be the aggressor. So that does mean that uh, technically he is not waiting for anyone. Now we do have a trap going to be coming in here and obviously trap is one of those players you can't let really let him into a late game macro um, as he will just beat you down with experience this uh, GSL super tournament winner uh, qualifying for GSL through that tournament yeah it, needless to say he's kind of the protoss to beat these days him and to be honest, I don't really know any other any other Protoss player who can kind of compare um, in that way that of how dominant he has been in 2021 so far. Now we do see he's going to be coming back in. The Reaper is down. Also, it's Light Shade, not Death Aura. And that will get deflected. That's pretty nice, knowing that there's not going to be two probes out on the map. There's just really no reason for that. And, uh, yeah, back at home, he's just going to get that reactor up. The bunker as well for that safety as that adept. Going to be coming in, looking for a little bit of pressure. Looks like he's going to let that finish the SCV. Eh, going to tank a little bit here, but good focus fire down some of that marine health gets the reaper with the long shot from downtown and he does escape with very little hit points now it now i like this move um from time getting that first hellion out allows you to be a little bit safer versus uh, this kind of 2-3 adept pressure that's coming across the map because it allows you to take a little bit of that firepower in the front with the marines and utilize them to deal with the oracles in backfield. Looks like he does have one widow mine ready to go. Yep, just one so far. And now just getting a lot of SCV damage, denying mining on this natural for as long as he possibly can. The Hellion going to waste some of that Oracle's energy, which is pretty nice. Not going to get any kills, though. And honestly, not even going to get to lay any workers. So now the Marine count a little bit higher. Some good pickup there from time. Going to keep some of these Marines alive a little bit past their expiration date. We'll get out of there with one of those adepts, but nice little pickoffs here from uh, from our red Terran player. I heard the widow mine burrow, but I do not know where it lurks. It's like uh, the Marines here will be enough and just barely out of range not going to allow that one mine to fire but overall you know getting three workers denying the third base is pretty darn good and now it looks like uh, yeah it looks like trap doesn't want to give any more time to time you know what I think time is the hardest player to cast because anytime you want to say something time related yeah exactly 
Cyclone, gonna get one nice pick off. Gotta be very careful with it. Losing that is super painful. As we have those additional stalkers gonna be morphing their way in. He's just gonna be looking to break this and honestly, since we don't have a lot of siege tanks, since we don't have Stim on the way, I'm worried that this could actually do a lot. Even gonna try and blink right on top of that siege tank, not gonna get it. But that just delays its positioning. Now even losing the Cyclone and the Raven forced to expend its energy. This is really good for Trap so far. Even though it doesn't really look like it, he's getting a ton of pickoffs. Good, Micro gonna try and save that Siege Tank for as long as humanly possible. Okay, a uh, good blink there. So honestly, I would like this a lot more for the Terran player if he did have Stim at least halfway done for with all that. He didn't take as much damage as I necessarily thought he was going to. Um, Trap might have overextended just a little bit, even though he still has that supply advantage. Uh, kind of just taking a look at the units lost. Yeah, he's still getting relatively good pickoffs as the Oracle going down to the Widow Mine. Okay. So yeah, Trap is pr doing pretty well for himself. That third base for time still not been able to kind of get dropped down on location. So it's essentially just being used for mules way lower than its peak efficiency. In terms of stim, that's very delayed. So any sort of counter pressure and just can't really come in super efficiently. Scan going to reveal that third base as well. The SCVs pulled to the low ground. And unfortunately, it's into the waiting jaws of the charge lots. The, the uh, siege tanks a little bit late on the siege up. Get one good volley, and they will. one of them will survive. Seven more workers, though, going down. And another big warp in for Trap. Now, Time is able to establish this position. Maybe not as well as he necessarily would like. Um, as that siege tank consistently having to be relocated and eventually just going down. So, the pickoffs are still going to be pretty good for Trap overall. And yeah, look at that. Six High Templar, one Archon. The rest of them going to be building up that energy for Storm. And what do we really have from time here? He's got plus one upgrades. That is good. But, um, yeah, Trap's already going to be on the way to plus two. He's going to get that second Robo facility. I think he threw down the bay as well. Okay, he hasn't yet. Uh, he does need that to finish before he can. But, yeah, here we go. As that storm, about three seconds for finishing... Uh, Trap gets a little bit impatient for it, but the first one whiffing pretty hard as he recognizes the High Templar. The next one's just kind of going down, getting rid of the Widow Mines, which is nice, but a very scrappy engagement for Trap. I don't think he can necessarily keep pushing this location with how little he has, but damn it, he's going to try. Now 12 workers going down, time running out of energy, and that is going to be it. He looks like he did have enough. GG is called. So a fantastic start here for Trap, doing a really good job of kind of just keeping his opponent on the back foot. I think that's why he's so powerful. Um, the best defense is a good offense, as they say in some old dusty tome. 
And that does mean we are going to be hopping in to game number two. Make sure you are getting your uh, units into battle. Join us, comrades, as we fight for victory, glory, and, of course, that fat, fat loot. And that is exactly what these guys are going to be up to as spawning in the bottom right corner give it up for kaitsu gaming's time and his opponents up here in the top give it up for africa freaks trap So coming on to Onkside, we just saw Zest play a very crisp, a very clean series on this map, doing a very good job in his own right. But I'm a little bit worried here about Time's ability under pressure versus his this opponent. Honestly, because if he would have had Stim started just a little bit earlier, if he would have had that going during that engagement, where the stalkers blinked into the main base and kind of took away all his attention. Then he would have been able to push out and get a little bit of a counterattack in uh, to slow down that third base going down and force some defensive warpins from trap. Meaning that he would have been able to stay alive much longer and probably get up to that late game where he would have a much better army um, than just Marine Marauder. He would have had ghosts. He would have probably had Vikings if he saw a transition to Colossus. And I mean, he would have just had what he needed to survive. So once again, he gets the Reaper out to scout for that proxy probe. The probe kind of just hanging out, waiting to go back in. The Reaper is, uh, once the Reaper is out of the way, it's pretty much anyone's game. Ooh, bit unfortunate right there. Losing that Reaper means there's not going to be any scouting available to him. And that's going to be pretty bad as we do have once again that Twilight con uh, Twilight Council coming up meaning that it's gonna be potentially another blink stalker play Bunker is filling up with Marine so that adept has to be a little bit careful about where it shades into just gonna stay here deny some mining which is still pretty nice even if it's a little bit of indirect damage it still forces trap into or time rather into an unfortunate situation where he's just gonna be a little bit behind on his mineral income might not be able to pay his rent that month but now that the freeloader is gone uh, he should be able to reassume that position gets the mules down and catch back up in terms of that income disadvantage. Even though it doesn't look that big right now, maybe one or 200 minerals difference, every mineral counts in the early game. It is seriously important um, for your build orders early on because later you can kind of stray from the path a little bit. You can kind of freestyle to stay safe. But yeah. Um, you do need to get that solid foundation early before you can do that. Now, we do see three additional gateways on the way. Blink is just about done. The Warp Prism going to be coming on in. And this is a super aggressive move from Trap. Fortunately, Time has no information on it whatsoever. I don't know if he saw the Warp Prism necessarily. Uh, the good thing for him is he does have a good Marine count. He does have that Siege Tank up. 
And this time, luckily, he does have Stim started. So as long as he can hold on and not lose too many units, he should be able to hold this as Stim and Siege Tanks are pretty much the timer for this push. Already using the Siege Tank for his own advantage. Gets uh, the pickoff there with the Adept. Also getting some splash on those on uh, those SCVs. But will have to back on out of there. As he really doesn't have enough to push in with the amount of Marines. Also not having that high ground vision is absolutely devastating for him. As it's forcing him to go straight into Siege Tank fire. like a small bunch of stalkers will be able to make their way in it's about uh, five or six kills before he decides it's a little bit too risky to stick around and now with stim done with two siege tanks on the field i i think trap is just going to be more content to hold this as a soft contain he doesn't need any more damage off the back of it he just needs to keep time off a of third base even being very aggressive here, going straight for the Siege Tank. Uh, if he would have gotten it, that would have been fantastic for him. But it does survive with 5 health. That one does not survive with 5 health, though. does have that transition ready he's got the uh, high templar archive and uh, starting up storm he will have charge ready very soon uh, looks like time does want to move out trying to hit a little bit of a point where it's not going to be at, uh, where there's not going to be that many units out since trap is investing so heavily into the infrastructure Did get rid of that High Templar, though, which is pretty darn good. But that's going to be a lot less Storm Energy available to him. The feedback did go down on, I believe, the Raven, so that will get picked off pretty quickly. And now Trap just going to uh, dive right on top of this. A couple of those High Templars dropping before Storm is done. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was absolutely horrendous but trap will be able to uh, clean that up and still have a couple units left in reserve that's a super battery and time is still pushing in sometimes you got to do what you got to do even if what you got to do is the wrong thing Now a big warp in from a Trap straight into the main base. Going to force all of these units back home. Using the Zealots to... Uh, he was getting a couple of splash damage down on the SEV. We'll get the Siege Tank. And now he's going to be able to kind of just shift around some of the units for time. Got to be careful though not to lose the Warp Prism. Now that's a little bit too weak to send back in. He's going to have to wait a while to recharge the shields and overall about nine workers only only losing zealots for him i'd say that was pretty worth it Trap with a very scary army going to be moving out since time did not take this base. He's going to have a little bit of trouble uh, as he's going to get cut off completely from his natural. 
this is actually a pretty nasty position for Trap to get into because that Sea Chain line is fully covering the front. And so he's gonna he's gonna be able to force field out uh, times units. It looks like he's gonna take a little bit of a detour. I'm not sure about engaging this. He didn't necessarily have to, but it looks to be working for him a lot as those siege tanks not able to get the damage done that they need to. The Immortal soaking up enough of the shots. And that is actually going to be it for that one. We do have we do have match point and onward though as that is a best of five but you know what before we get into that we've got our next battle ready so let us introduce the champions who have been brought forward to defeat the forces of evil in this case the forces of evil are orc spearmen an orc tank a goblin catapult so make sure we are going to not jump on top of each other guys that's gonna be pretty important let's get this on and it looks like RNS Javi with the most units out right now sushi gonna be leading the charge with that epic swift foot rogue level 23 the Orc Spearmen are kind of just hanging out in the top. Oh my goodness, they must be terrified of what's about to come in. As, yeah, that was a pretty easy victory. Oh hey, I got a couple kills, nice. Alright, like that, uh, we do have a little musketeer. Let's see who gets that one. In terms of kills... Me and Sushi got all the kills, but uh, I'm not going to be greedy, you know, I will, uh, let's see, you know what, Javi, you put down the most units, here, have some more units, and for these, eh, I haven't seen Kozan in a while, I'll give it to him, also, I'll make sure that ev. ooh, no, 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 oh, yeah, let's just make sure you guys get all of the rewards because none of this is possible without any of you. And I will be granting those ones in terms of our next battle. Oh, spooky, scary spiders coming on down. Oh, these guys don't look too bad. Siege Tower. Bleh. Mm. Oh, he's going to lead the charge from the front. Will you rally around our leader? <laughs> Do I call you Pilot Passer now? Uh, you can. Uh, for anyone wondering, I just got my commercial pilot's license yesterday, so that's what he's talking about there. But uh, we do have game number three on Romanticide between these absolute legendary players. Trap doing very good at keeping his opponent on the back foot. Can time break the cycle? Can he claim victory? Let's find out. As up here in the top position, representing, I believe, still the Africa Freaks. Give it up for Trap. And his opponent down here in the bottom. He is for Kaitsu, running out of time. So it's going to be interesting to see whether he decides to kind of keep things similar. Uh, you know, the kind of old policy of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And go for something more aggressive, like that blink timing, which did so much early on. Well, you know, there's still a couple of different things that you can do. Obviously, the, the most dirty, the most disgusting thing that I have ever seen in all my days is the Void Ray build, where you just drop down the shield, or the uh, Stargate right here. Build a ton of shield batteries and just slowly inch your way forward. 
It is disgusting, but you know what? It's home. But no, it does not look like that will be the case, as we do have that Nexus coming on in. He's blocking the natural of time. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see what his tech choice is, as time hasn't really scouted across the map yet. Hasn't even sent a uh, one SCV to do so. So, okay, so we do have the Marine going to be coming out, getting rid of the probe as the Reaper going to be jumping in. He gets the kiss of death, but will be able to survive for just a little bit longer. And now once again, the Twilight Council is down. So with that Twilight Council, we have to count the number of um, gateways that he adds on. Three, uh, if he adds on two gateways... It's more than likely defensively. Uh, you know, he's not going to be too aggressive on the other side of the map. But if he throws down a third one, as well as a robo facility, then yeah, you better be ready because he's going to be looking to knock your teeth in. And if it was anybody else, I would say just get a good mouth guard. But this guy is anti-mouth guard. Uh, he, will, he will just punch through that mouth guard. This time, though, for time, he will be able to get in there. Just barely doesn't see it. Oh, my God. That is the Miss Scout of the Century trying to go for a couple of kills rather than getting all of the information. The Adepts do come in, and they get rid of all of the Marines. The Hellions doing what they can to kind of hold on. They will get forced back, but my goodness. Three Marines dead. We are exactly even in the unit's lost tab. The additional gateways have been, or at least one of them has been brought back online. The Observer is going to be coming out as well as Blink, but he's not really committing too heavily to it. Kind of like what I was saying. Without too many additional, um, without any, uh, too many additional gates, he's just going to keep these home just in case Time decides to go across the map. But Time is going to play this one out, I believe. Uh, just slightly more defensively you know he did get crunched when he did move out last time so i don't think he really wants to repeat that for a third time obviously since he is on his last legs as well it can be pretty brutal to go down in a 3-0 even if it is a smaller tournament it kind of just gets rid of some morale But uh, yeah, we do have the, the next transition coming on in. <laughs> Looks like the Observer did get spotted. We'll survive, though. As we do see a couple of Stalkers going to be in for a rude awakening when they decide to make their way in. Maybe not that rude of an awakening as they do get rid of the Raven and hit exactly as time moves out. Oh my goodness. This is about as bad of a timing for a time as you can get. Losing six workers off the bat. One of the siege tanks will just barely go down. And now Trap can just blink on out. I think he's going to be pretty happy with that. Especially now that he's probably going to have enough units in position to deal with this drop coming across the map. And if he doesn't, recall. 
Pretty darn good. Alright, losing one of the Immortals for free. Not really the best case scenario for him. Some good pickoffs there from time. A lot of micro going down, but now focus firing the medevacs. One full medevac goes down. The second one falls. And unfortunately, it looks like time ran out of himself.